the future airliner, as pictured by Eddie Rickenbacker. Popular Science Monthly, July 1922. The commercial airliner of the future will probably resemble closely the airplane pictured here, especially if intended for supermarine travel, writes Captain Rickenbacker, first American ace during the war and now head of his own motor car company. Radical as the design may seem, it will be observed that in its essentials, in cantilever wings, hull profile, retractable chassis, the airplane is simply an embodiment of engineering practices already sanctioned in America and abroad. This superliner of the skies for passenger and freight transportation, which Captain Rickenbacker predicts will be realized with the passing of but a very few years, will be a giant monoplane, perhaps 300 feet from wingtip to wingtip. The motors will be of approximately 1,000 horsepower each, several motors to a unit, and each unit driving a great propeller with three blades from 15 to 20 feet long. The motor units will be set in the wings, which will be very thick, from 5 to 10 feet on the leading edge, and will be of internally braced cantilever construction. The fuselage will be in the form of a boat, but landing wheels that draw into the body during flight will also be provided. This will enable it to alight on land and water. To hit the moon with a rocket. Popular Science Monthly. April 1920. Professor Goddard of Clark College has invented a rocket that operates on entirely new principles and that would make it possible to hit the moon. It has been estimated that with ordinary rockets, it would take 14,290 million million tons of explosives to reach the moon. Professor Goddard's rocket requires only 602 pounds, because the gases are discharged not at the usual rate of 1,000 feet a second, but at 7,000 feet. The fastest projectile hurled from a rifle has a velocity of less than 3,000 feet a second, from which it is seen what a marked improvement Professor Goddard has made. The total charge of explosive required to reach the moon would be 17 tons, equal to the total weight of ammunition discharged by a battleship when it shoots off all its guns at once. In other words, Professor Goddard's improvement at a single step transfers the enterprise of hurling the missile to the moon from the class of impractical dreams to the domain of comparably simple tasks. The Movie House of Tomorrow, a vast sectored amphitheater. Popular Science Monthly, May 1922. Concentric circles of seats divided into sectors, each sector facing the center of a mammoth amphitheater and provided with its own screen. Such may be the motion picture house of the future, as predicted by far-sighted motion picture engineers. Pictures for all sectors will be screened from one film. Seats will be designed by experts in correct posture to promote comfort and health and will fold automatically as soon as vacated. All the master sounds, music, speech, and noises incidental to the film story will be produced in the acoustic laboratory of the theater adjoining the projection room. These sounds will be delivered automatically in synchronism by direct connection with the film through a telephone attached to the auditor's chair. 